side of kids TV. Um, this is about the Nickelodeon era in the 90s. And my producer put me on to this documentary, and I don't know anything about this documentary, anything about um, Nickelodeon. I didn't watch it. I, I mean, I wasn't a fan of the network. I, I didn't have cable at that particular time. Um, so when they were out, I was like five years old, four or five, when a lot of this stuff was in the early 90s. And it wasn't, wasn't for me. It was pretty much for white teenagers, white kids primarily. And um, it just wasn't for me. Um, but when Tasha put me onto this documentary, I just went in not knowing what it was. She she called, she said, she texted, she says, really good. And I said, okay, quiet on the set. And so it's about Dan, the executive producer, Dan. And when I saw this young white man, because it was allegations about these shows that it was pedos on the set getting arrested and stuff. And I'm like, okay. And Dan, he was, uh, he wasn't good around women. He wanted women to do all crazy stuff. He had white women writers to share their salary together. Then one of the women, the fat one, she went to the network. She went to the union and they said, no, it's illegal to, to split this, the salary. Then the fat writer got called by fat Dan and Dan was like, listen, if you're trying to destroy the company, I'm going to destroy you. You won't be able to work. And then he didn't, uh, then, then it was another, the skinny writer. She was a white woman. She was right on the show. And then he was really being mean to her. And then she wanted to go on, Oh, she took a day off or some happened and they fired her. And then the fat one, um, a lot of the male writers was in the writing room and he started making these jokes. Did you say you was a, uh, uh, operator on the phone, making love on the phone, those type of operators. And she was like, no, are you sure you didn't say that last time? And the fat one, she left. And, um, so, I'm, I'm just watching. And then, then it gets to the kids that now they're adults on, on the set. They got the black guy on there. He felt racism. His mama didn't like it. His mama stood up for him. And his mom, his mama was raising hand because she felt like Dan had him playing like the drug dealer. Dan played like the token black guy being a rapper. Like they, they was talking about how, um, uh, Fear, fear Factor, how they had the kid version. Like, they were really talking about that network. And I didn't know how powerful and popular it was, but people were talking about it. And so they were giving their stories. And then it, it led into, like, this whole pedal ring that was on there. Producers, PAs, they were getting in with these children. And one of the girls, I believe her name was Brandy, a white girl, her mother allowed her to email the PA and the PA start email. It started innocently. Then, then he starts sending pictures of himself to the child. It was very evil and demonic. And I'm just watching this documentary and I'm like, ugh, like this is so sick. I was getting sick to my stomach. Then we get to this, um, this white guy uh, called, his name is uh, Drake Bell, and he was very popular on the network, had his own show. And he talked about how he was um, S aid when he was a teenager, and how his father saw this particular producer or acting coach. Um, how close he was trying to be with his son, rubbing on his shoulders. And, and the father was like, you know, this is weird. Like, get away from my son, stay away from him. So the, the pedal got in, in, in Drake's ear to fire the father as the manager, because the father was the manager, and they made the mother the manager. And then the father called talked to the mother and said please whatever you do do not leave Drake with this guy so the 
Drake telling his story. And he said, my mom didn't want to drive me to auditions in L.A. She didn't like to drive like that. So this particular pedo producer would drive me around. And then he said, well, I don't feel like driving you all the way to Orange County. It's an hour away. So how about you spend a night? Blah, blah, blah. He's like, okay, cool, whatever. He spent a night. Then he started doing things to Drake. He started doing all type of S-A, me too. R word, etc. It was so sad because clearly Drake is still traumatized by it that he didn't want to go into details. And he told the producer, because the producers, their job is to get the tea. But you can't try to force it out of him or he'll leave. So he said, Imagine the worst thing you can do to a person that is violated. Imagine that. That's what happened. Just the worst thing. That's what happened. They talk about he used objects, etc. Like it was so sick. And my thing about the industry is it's 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 really sick because you you be trusty with these people and you can't. And when I watched it, I I got I was teary eyed because I'm like, these children, like Drake, went through pure hell, and his father saw that man coming a mile away, stood in the gap, and the mother. Took over as the manager because the mother, you know, Drake mother and father, they divorced. She took over as management, but the father saw it coming. But that enemy said, I got to separate that father from the son. I want to violate his son, so let me separate the two. So he insert, inserted his way, inserted himself into that dynamic and broke it up. It's it's just so demonic when I watch the documentary. I got more parts to watch, and I'm gonna watch it and come back with some more information that I see. And I believe Dan, I don't want to say this, I believe that he knew a lot of these guys that was pedal. I believe he did a lot of um pedal type of um skits. That now, if you look at it now, you're like, oh, my God. Because it was one particular skit. Ariana Grande was, was talking to a potato. And then she put water all over her body as a little girl, as a teenager. And it was nothing like a whole entire pedal entertainment ring. And it was so demonic. It was right in the people's faces. But because people want to be entertained, that enemy will put little parts of pedal behavior in the skit. It's, oh, that's nothing but entertainment. They even had one particular skit that they named the little girl a character of the private parts the skin of a private part, whatever they named that a man part, crotch area, the skin, they named the little girl that character. That's how demonic it was. I, I just couldn't believe that they okayed this it, 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 on Nickelodeon, like a children's so, so called network. And then I was like, they don't care. It's about the money. It's about the money. It's about the cash. It's about power. And we don't care what it is, as long as you're making us hitting the ratings. And the reason why I say it's not normal for me, because I'm not in that industry. I don't want to be in it. If that's what you call normal, that's sickness. And that's why you have to be careful trying to get involved into these industries because you're going to see something. 
And that black, y'all named the, the guy named the, the, the black actor that was a child. But his mama, she saw a lot. They had to get out of here. Listen, this black woman, she too much. She doing too much. We're going to have to fire him. That black woman saw them out of the way. She spoke up and she cried because she said the day we got the day he got fired, that broke our relationship because I believe the son, he blamed his mom for getting him fired. But looking at it now, your mother prevented you of getting violated. Your mother stood in the gap of you getting violated. Because they didn't want the parents involved. They, they, when, when allegations were coming, when people were getting arrested and they had lawyers and the lawyers came and to speak to the, to ch the children actors, right? And they said, parents leave the room. Now the parents are supposed to stay by law, but they leave the lawyers talk about what well, this would happen. Be, you know, blah, 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 any questions, anybody got something to say? Because they were trying to get ahead of the story to try to see if anybody else was violated by these pedals that was on set it's sick but parents want their because parents not that they want their child it's a money thing when you break it down this you can possibly retire your parents your you, that's the money maker so a lot of parents look the other way because it's the money maker even on this documentary quiet on set the dark side of kids tv a lot of the adults there were children that were didn't speak in this documentary because they're still in the industry. They're not going to destroy their bags because people, because there's plenty Dan's, there's plenty of the other entity, the folk that were arrested. There's plenty of them in the industry and they're still there. Dan is still powerful in the industry. He still got connects. And the reason how the power is connected, if you a person that know other pedals, you got stuff on them too. And you, it's just, it's just all, the system is just all sick. Now, Nickelodeon definitely came up and was literally on the platform. And Nickelodeon, they, they wrote a statement saying, we, we, we do protocol. We're watching stuff right now. We are doing this right now. We, we are triple checking right now. That's a bull. And the reason why I say bull, because it's still children in the industry. They're still getting violated in this industry today. Probably more now than they was back then. And it was so, it's so out in the open in a lot of these cases. That's why you have to be careful trying to get an industry. But to this little girl, her name, I believe her name was Brandy. The mother said, because they talked about a little piece of her history. She said, my mother worked in Hollywood and she saw how evil it was and told me she didn't want me in the industry. She warned me about how evil Hollywood, and this was the old Hollywood back in the 60s, the 50s, back that old Hollywood. And she worked behind the scenes. She saw how evil it was. And for this woman, as an adult, have a child to get her daughter involved into this is crazy. I just don't know as a parent, and I don't want to be too judgmental. So I don't have children. But as a viewer, it's nowhere in the world that you allow your little girl to email an adult man what they got to talk about even if it is about business why are we not you talking to the parent the adult she can't make no decisions legally i'm her voice so i just don't understand about the parents here how vulnerable and stupid these that's just like me talking to Tasha's daughter. Oh, yeah, Tasha's daughter. I need to talk. We emailing each other. She's six, seven, eight years. We emailing and texting. It's if that ain't weird, that's weird. I shouldn't be texting Tasha's seven, six, seven year old daughter. And she telling me, yeah, you know, while he texts me today, that's weird. I'm not a father. I'm not her uncle. I'm not related. 
This I'm a stranger. This this eight years old. I'm te- that's. I just don't understand as a parent how stupid you can be and foolish. So then we get back into Drake. Get back into Drake Bell. I said we got to get back into Drake. And the reason why his story touch like my emotions. And Joe Bell, his father, this is in part three. This is very, very sad because he was on the second season of the of the Amanda show when it moved from Paramount Studios to Nickelodeon on Sunset. That's when he met Brian Peck. Despite how many people applauded Peck as a well-known coach who worked with the likes of famous stars, Brian Peck violated Drake multiple, multiple, multiple times. And a part of this documentary, not Drake mother, not Drake mother, but Drake girlfriend mother, Brian wanted to invite Drake out and Drake was tired of him. Like, listen, I got a girlfriend, leave me alone. He kept calling on the cell phone, kept calling, kept calling, kept calling, kept calling. So the mother was like, this is weird. So she was like, come on, Drake, come in the kitchen. Let me talk to you. She closed the door. She said, what's going on with you and Brian Pack? What are you, well, what is that? So am I gonna... No, this ain't normal for a 40 some year old man to be calling my girlfriend, boyfriend. That's what? 17 years. This is not normal. So she called his mama. His mama. And said, I'm going to send him to my therapist because something is going on here. So this is the part when he did his show. He had a spinoff. And Brian Peck told Drake, I want to play your father on this series, on this show. He said, no. And so he was so disturbed by that. He called his mom and he finally told his mother all of the things that was going on with Brian Peck, the thing that Brian Peck was doing to him, violating him. She called the cops, the cops, the detective come, et cetera. Now that was it. And I was in tears. I went to sleep and I'm going to finish the rest tonight because I was over. I was upset. I was angry at the mother. The father stood up. They, 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 they accused this man of stealing. He didn't do none of that. He was standing up for his son, and he was made out to be the bad guy. I, I really felt for that father. I felt for the son. I felt like that really had to just break. And the way that man was crying, I, I just I couldn't, I couldn't watch no more. It was too much. The way that man, because he saw it coming. He tried to avoid it. He broke down. It hurt him. My heart go out to a father, to the son that he tried. He seen that devil coming. And he tried to prevent it. And he got pushed out the door. It's a four part. So I got to watch the four part. But I will say this. This, I can't tell parents what to do for their children. But if you have a child that want to get into the entertainment industry, I believe you should be there with them 24-7. You should have, you should be the manager. If they do have a manager, you control everything. Do right. Be there on set, off set. Don't leave them with no adults. Don't leave them with nobody. You be there 24 7. Do not be too trusty. I don't care if they get mad. I don't care if they upset. Hey, I got to be here. You don't want me here. We both leaving. 
But the problem is, when you got greed, you get blind to it. When you want money, you will put your child up to be touched. Because you want, mama got Gucci. Mama got a BMW. Mama got multiple properties that I'm using my child to fund my lifestyle, fund my sideline businesses. But the black mama wasn't having it. And then the parents got to go go to work too. So you got that. It, again, especially when you're dealing with Hollywood, clearly with this documentary, any parent that got children in the industry, let this be your wake-up call. They had black people represent. They had white people. They had all type of perspective in this documentary. And that Amanda person, it's sad because you set her up to go cuckoo. She was too young for all of that success. You have adults that can't handle that much pressure, but you're giving it to a child? What do you expect? Of course she's going to be cuckoo. Then this woman tried to get emancipated from her family. It was just all around demonic. Then the man in the jacuzzi with Amanda, Dan, in a jacuzzi with her, uh, massage, massaging her, or she massaging him. It was all weird. Then they had the black, the black character. They had Brian Christopher. They had him submerged in peanut butter. And the dogs licking the peanut butter. Then they had him, they had Bryant, uh, 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 the youngest rapper. He played a, a, a thing that swim in the body, not a baby, but, you know, had him dressed up like that, just underwear. It was just. I, I can't, I can't make this up. It was just all around demonic. It was just, he's still in therapy. He's still messed up in the head. It was just, it was just sick. But we need to see and hear from them because this is a warning for people that want to get in that industry to know what you're getting into to know what you're getting into I am praying for these child stars I am praying for them thank you to Tasha because Tasha put me on to this documentary thank you to my producer Tasha uh, I just I watched it last night and it just was very disturbing. I couldn't even really get it kind of like messed up my morning a little bit because usually I get up about five in the morning. I got up at like about five thirty in the morning. It just messed me up in the morning. It was just that greatly disturbing to see. I don't even know if I want to watch part four before I even go to sleep. Because that's something that you want to watch at the beginning. Then do something to get that out your spirit. If I do watch it, I got to watch others to get that out of my mind. It disturbed my spirit watching it. It greatly disturbed it. Because I'm like, this is sick. So I, I am urging people to, um, for those that do want to watch, you know, watch with an open mind. Watch with caution. And watch with, you know. I, I would say, you know, for anybody, it's a great conversation to have with your family, with your teenagers, you know, about the pros and cons of the in, in industry and get their thoughts about what they think about being famous, about being, especially those that want to be in the industry uh, and some that are already so what got their foot in the industry. So let that be a conversation.
And that's why you have to really train your children up to know how to navigate these things because they were going against pros that came against them. And I'm definitely praying for Drake. I'm praying for the Bell family. I'm just praying for that entire cast of the Amanda show. Um, Amanda herself, praying for her. This is all sad, you guys. And I will. Um, and then Brian Peck being pen pal with the serial deleter, John Wayne Gacy. For him to even brag that I'm pen pals with John Wayne Gacy. That to me was sick. Somebody should say, oh, we out of here. The man was bragging. I got a portrait. I got letters. If that, that's the one. Do you know who John Wayne is? That guy, John Wayne Gates, he was actually deleting teenagers. He was taking them out. We move on. I can't talk about the documentary no more. It, it was too much. It, it was too much. I couldn't believe it. I, you have to see it to believe this stuff. I, I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. I said, "What?" I said, "You really were on." And I'm glad he sued. Right. He didn't wait to 30 some, 40 some. He pressed charges and he didn't wait 50 years. Right. That's my point. And then the what really got it going that Brian Peck, because they wanted Drake to get on the phone with him to, him to confess, get a confession out of him. And this man confessed to Brian and they got him on tape. He didn't wait 50 years. Uh oh, they don't like that. He didn't wait 80 years. That he told us at a great time while it was fresh. And the police got involved and recorded him. Got him. And then the fat writer. Did the fat writer? Yeah, the fat writer, she sued him for gender discrimination. A, a hostile, a hostile work environment, and she sued Dan. She had to sue Dan because Dan didn't like women. It was very hostile. He would say these jokes, and she sued, and she won a settlement. And it still it harmed her in in the business because when you sue like that, don't nobody want to deal with you because this happened in so many networks. So. You you an outsider and you you difficult. So, um, they 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 was because we all know that Dan he's very excited around children like Larry Reed, um, and it's sick. But people are still throw their children at him, get parts, like they were doing with R. Kelly because people want to be famous. It is what it is. It's sad, but I will uh, watch the other part though. I'm going to watch probably when I'm done, then I can watch something else to get it out of my spirit. All right. Um, I want to talk about 